It is another battle for Bedard tonight. Uh, the Blue Jackets are taking on the San Jose Sharks. We've got another squad cast for you. It is JD Young over at Locked on Sharks. We're talking trade deadline. We're talking game preview. We're talking tanking. We are talking all of that good stuff today on Locked on Blue Jackets. Locked on Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Blue Jackets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jay Foster, here to bring you news, stories, uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything in between about your favorite team and mine, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Before we get started, I want to thank everyone for making this your first listen today, every day. Locked On Blue Jackets is free and available on all podcast platforms. We're also over on YouTube. Uh, we're heading towards our next milestone over there. So if you haven't hit subscribe over there yet, please feel free to do so. It helps me out. It helps you out. You get notified when new episodes go live. Everybody wins. Today, we are doing another squad cast with one of our California cohorts. Uh, we've got JD Young of Locked on Sharks here to talk all things tanking, all things trade deadline, and also uh, a little bit of game preview, what the Sharks need to do to win, what the Blue Jackets need to do to win. That's all coming up on today's episode. So I'm just going to get right into it. Blue Jackets have had... One battle for Bedard this week already, and now they are on to a second one. Um, although at least the Sharks are playing semi-fun hockey, which is not something that you can say about every basement team. And who better to talk about the Sharks than uh, the last content boy standing? We've got JD Young of Locked on Sharks here to talk. I figured we'd just talk about Eric Carlson for the next 28 minutes. Is that okay with you? I am perfectly happy with talking about Eric Carlson for as long as you would like. Um, we could just go off crazy Eric Carlson stats, and that would be that would that could fill an entire episode if we wanted to. That was yeah. yeah. So as a as a little bit of, of inside information for um, Lockdown Sharks fans, uh, my fiance is a Sharks fan from uh, from San Jose. And so all through the game last night, I just got a bunch of texts about how handsome Eric Carlson is and how she's going to run away with him. And I'm like, you know what? Normally I'd be mad, but I kind of understand. So, <laughs> but I want on a rampage um, on the ice and off the ice right now. <laughs> truly. That's kind of where I want to start, actually, is obviously the Sharks are kind of going through the same motions as the Blue Jackets at the minute, where they're just so god awful, except for like one guy. Um, and that guy on the Sharks is Eric Carlson, who's having a casual 60 point season so far. Um, was this expected? Did you see this coming? No. Uh, <laughs> I have been a very staunch Eric Carlson defender since day one, right? I mean, if, go go check the receipts. I've been very much Eric Carlson's awesome. Um, you know, Eric Carlson could be awesome. I, in my wildest dreams, did not expect a potential 100-point season out of Eric Carlson. He has 62 points so far in 46 games. Uh r- Ridiculous. He is fifth in the NHL scoring. That's for not just def- – that's – Everybody fifth in the NHL in scoring um, on pace for, I think, you know, casual 106 points this season. He's had four, four point games as well this year. What he's doing in the offensive zone is beyond our wildest dreams. You know, we, we haven't seen a hundred point defenseman since Paul Coffey did it in 91, 92. Um, I was six, seven. Um, I'm sure Jay, you were just not even, I was not even around then. <laughs> yes. Like that. This, this, this is what we, you know, every time it's like Eric Carlson's done something since, you know, 1980 or since, you know, Bobby Orr, like things we, we have not seen a season like what we're seeing out of Eric Carlson right now. And he's like you said, the sharks are bad. The sharks have been kind of threading the needle of being really, really fun and entertaining to watch, but still losing a bunch of games. And if you're a tanking team, I don't think you can ask for much more than that. Um, you know, cause there's nothing worse than just, slogging through games and nothing fun to exciting about it so um yeah eric carlson is awesome um what he's doing night in night out of being just the best player on the ice it's just it's a treat to watch eric carlson just play hockey again it yeah it sure is i watched a bunch of sharks games while i was out there in in october and i kept joking about like man what are you gonna do when i go home and eric carlson stops scoring because i assumed that was What's going to happen? My hockey powers can only be used for evil, you know? Um, And he just 
kind of kept on going. And this is something I actually talked about with, um, I just recorded with uh, uh, JD South, as we call him, um, JD Hernandez of, of Locked On Ducks about, you know, how much it sucks to watch a tanking team and they're not even fun. Like the Blue Jackets have been just atrocious, especially recently. You know, they've lost 15 of their last 18 games. They've had some kind of fun wins in there. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the game against the Red Wings was pretty fun. They ended up winning that one, but they almost let a four goal lead slip away. Um, but for the most part, it's just been, they go down early and then they don't get back up. And it's just, it like you said, it's a slog. It is so truly unpleasant to watch. Like I would accept losing if they were also being fun at but, the same yes. time. And I think that's what the Sharks are getting at the minute, which is, like you said, it's not a terrible way to watch a tanking team. So what, I mean, we all kind of expected the Blue Jackets to kind of be better this you know mm-hmm. maybe not a playoff team but like not this <laughs> not this right not one of the worst if not the you know one of the worst teams in the NHL what happened this year I mean is it injuries is it I mean you guys signed Johnny Gaudreau and I felt like okay this this team's gonna kind of maybe take the next step what happened god I mean it's it's kind <laughs> of a combination of a lot of things um I think luck plays into it the Blue Jackets have been pretty unlucky this season, I feel like, and I don't know if this is confirmation bias because I watch a lot of the Blue Jackets <laughs> games, obviously, and so I always feel like there's a um, an unlucky bounce or, you know, someone, there's a missed penalty call, things like that. And then, you know, for the, for that's, you know, small picture stuff, big picture stuff. They've got three guys out at the minute with torn labrums done for the season. Jake Voracek might not be back ever. Um, he's almost certainly done for this season at least. Mm -hmm. Um, So there you've got four guys that have missed four uh, Zach Wrensky, Jake Bean, just a Danforth, who admittedly is a depth guy and Jake Voracek. But there's, you know, two of your top four defensemen and one of your top six forwards out for 70 games of the season. Mm -hmm. Um, So like injuries haven't helped. Coaching has been just abysmal. Like I just, and this is something that I'm not going to get super in depth into because my listeners have heard it all before. Your listeners don't <laughs> probably don't care about the intricacies of Brad Larson's coaching decisions. But if your fourth line grinders are playing almost double the minutes a night of your young players, like that feels like there's a problem there. You know, that feels like there's a disconnect. And he can go on about preaching patience and you have to approach these young players the right way. You know, I'm sure you're seeing a similar sort of thing with you know, Bordelow and Eklund at the minute of, I just want yeah. them to play. Why aren't they in the NHL? You know, well, because yes, they probably yes. get the the Cole Sillinger treatment of playing eight minutes a night and then getting scratched immediately after making a goal happen or whatever. Um, so it's been a lot of different things. Goaltending has been brutal. Um, it's, it's starting to pick up. I know that that's a weird thing to say after they just allowed five goals for like the 17th time this season, but <laughs> goaltending has started to pick up. Um, their young goalie, Daniel Tarasov, their third string guy, he's been very good. Um, I know that's kind of a problem when your third string goalie has been your best, your best player, your starter that signed for the next five years has been by far the worst of your three goalies, but uh, the Martin Jones effect, <laughs> the Martin Jones of it all. Um, yes. I think, and like in terms of like in in defense of Elvis, I do think he is still struggling a lot with you know the um, what happened in the summer of 2021 um, with Matisse Kivlenix. You know, I think that's a big factor in all of this. He says he's fine, but I don't. I'm not. I don't I'm think anybody could be fine after that. something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And so like it's frustrating to watch as a fan because. A, you want your goaltending to be good and you want it to succeed. And it's frustrating when that doesn't happen, but it's also frustrating when you look at the reason why, because I like, I would feel bad criticizing Elvis because I feel like he more than most goalies in this league has a valid reason to be struggling. Um, And he's mad at himself about it. You know, he's come out multiple times being like, listen, I know that I can do better than this. I know I need to be better. I am losing the team games right now. And that's really hard to hear as someone who is a, a goalie fan, who is an Elvis fan specifically, you know? But it's just, like you say, it's it's the answer to what has been the problem is kind of just everything. Um, a lot of guys are having down years. Um, Johnny Gaudreau has been a real bright spot in all of this. Mm-hmm. Um, he's up to, I believe, 42 points on the season, which is, you know, it's not Eric Carlson levels, but I think it's respectable for a guy yeah. on a, just a really bad team. Um, so it's... And Patrick Laine has been in and out of the lineup as well. You know, we go back to injuries. Um, they've got... I believe they've got two players um, at the minute who have played in every game so far. Um, 
That's so no it's <laughs> it's just yeah, it's but... not been good. Every aspect of this season has been bad, and every time you think they're turning a corner, someone else gets injured, or the goaltending falls off a cliff, or someone goes twelve games without scoring a goal. Like it's just it's been brutal and endless. And I am gonna lose my mind when Chicago gets Connor Bedard in July. No, uh, the karma, karma, buddy, karma will prevent. Uh, that's you, I keep holding on to that. <laughs> Yes, yes, karma will, and we know, we know, old Gary's gonna uh, rig this bad boy for Arizona. That way, they've got Bedard, uh, new arena with Bedard. Yes, anyway, but <laughs> you heard it here first, cool. folks. Yes. So, in a minute, we've got more conversation with JD about the trade deadline and what both teams are going to do. That's coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, but first, I've got to tell you about Bet Online. Because it's your number one source for sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from pro football to basketball, baseball's right around the corner, hockey, uh, UFC, boxing. They've even got casino games. If you want to play blackjack, you can do that at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at betonline as well. They're the fastest and easiest way to get your betting information. So if you want to put some money on the Blue Jackets winning tonight, then I don't know that I can recommend that, but you can certainly do that. Just head to the website, use your laptop or your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Because Bet Online is where the game starts. All right. It's- I mean, trade deadline. So both these teams are kind of on the same path, right? Of being bad teams, right? They're both bad teams. Um Six weeks away from the trade deadline. I know what is, is are the Blue Jackets going to be kind of active? Do they have pieces that they're going to try to sell off? Like, what do you, I know it's a lot of guys who have been injured and stuff. Um, what do you think the Blue Jackets do heading into, you know, into the trade deadline here? Yeah. So they have, I believe, three definite pieces. Um, they have uh, Gus Nyquist. Uh, pending UFA. Vladislav Gavrikov, defenseman, is a pending UFA as well. I know. I love... I'm going to be so sad when they trade Gus Nyquist. I love him. I think he's so underrated. Yes. Um, Which I think is good because they can probably get... I think they could get a first-round pick for a guy like Mm. Gus Nyquist. Um, He's been having a pretty good season. He had a good season last year. He's one of those, like, veteran guys that people love. Um, Vladislav Gavrikov has kind of had a brutal season, but he plays the kind of hockey where, you know, the guys just go nuts. For that, um, apparently the the asking price for him is a first round pick and a prospect. Which yes, yes, please, I will take that. <laughs> um, the third piece is kind of a bit more of a question mark, which is Jonas Corposalo, who is expiring. He's a pending UFA. He signed a one year contract. Um, I think just to kind of figure out the goaltending position because the expectation was they signed Elvis long term. The expectation was he would step into the starters net, and then. He has spent much of this season struggling or injured or sick or, you know, just a, all of the mm. above. Um, and so now I'm wondering, do they do they move Corpus Allo? He's got like, I think he's got like a 906 so far this season. So the numbers aren't great, but, but it's on a I still think it's on a bad team. team. And yes. I think he could be, a, a, again, a pretty decent pickup for, you know, say... Maybe a team like Florida, which looks like they have uh, at least one goalie on IR and another goalie who had to leave the game. <laughs> yes, uh, as of you know, l- not long before recording this, so we're recording this Friday night. Um, nope, Thursday night. We're recording this Thursday <laughs> night. It's it's Friday morning here. Um, yes. So I looked at the the Friday thing, but um, th- my point is. I don't know whether they will trade Corpus Allo just because I think they might need him just to have enough goalies to finish the season, but mm-hmm. he's definitely an option for a team that needs a goalie. You know, we're looking at maybe a team like Edmonton or a Florida. The Kings or, or the, yeah, there's a bit. Yeah, the Kings every, is another great example. Yeah. Yeah. Or just a veteran Toronto. guy that maybe probably won't start games, but is there if they need someone to. Yeah, and I think the Sharks are kind of in the same spot, right? You know, talking about goalies, you'll get James Reimer, who's also a uh, UFA. I know he's got, I think he's got a five-team trade, uh, no trade, whatever. But uh, Reimer is a good guy. He will probably weigh that, especially if he can go play meaningful playoff hockey, which is something the Sharks haven't done for a while. And, you know, I think, you know, Reimer, Reimer is a guy who will be definitely out the door. Um, Kapokakinen's kind of been the same, kind of almost the same thing, where they traded for him last season. 
Um, they signed him to a two-year extension, kind of like two by two and a half million dollar extension, hoping that he would be kind of the goalie of the future and would kind of take that starter and take that reign um, from James Reimer. But James Reimer just keeps fighting off um, any challenger. It's pretty funny. Um, anytime the Sharks bring in a young goalie, he just smacks him down and says, this is my net here. So um, it's, the, it's the Jonathan Quick effect. It's very funny. It's the Jonathan, yes. So, um, but, you know, uh, Capo Kakinen really hasn't had the season that Sharks fans ex- expected from him. You know, played really well after getting traded last year in, in a kind of a nine game sample size, but really kind of has struggled this year. And the defense hasn't been helpful. And with the Sharks this year, it's, it's a lot of like the defense will play really well for like 95 percent at the time and then they make like a catastrophic uh mistake and then the goalie d- isn't able to help him out so it's kind of a little bit of a chicken of the egg situation of is it the defense or is it the goaltending or it's probably a little bit of both of you know they don't cover a guy and you leave a guy wide open next to you know next to the goalie they go like there's, there's not much you know capital captain or rhymer whoever's there there's not much they're going to be able to do so it's a little bit of you know, that's why like Reimer and, and, and Capo Kakin's numbers are, are lower than you expect, both of them under a 900 save percentage right now. But it's still, I mean, Capo Kakin is still young. I still think he can kind of turn around. He's started to play better recently. I expect him to be the starter uh, for this game. Reimer played on Wednesday and the uh, Sharks went against the Stars and the Sharks play again on Sunday against the Bruins. Uh, no disrespect, but I think you probably want Reimer against the Bruins uh, just to give yourself a little bit better chance to, to try to win that game. It's going to be a very wild swing of Blue Jackets to Bruins here. In, in yeah, Boston. that's a real, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, if that means... And this is something that we can talk about in the next segment, yeah. but if that gives us Kakada and, like, I think the Blue Jackets keep running into starting goalies by accident, um, <laughs> and I just think it would be nice if they got to play... If they got to play someone who was also struggling, you know? Yeah, but I mean, yeah, Reimer, I think is definitely one out the door. Um, guys like, you know, kind of more depth guys like Matt Nieto and Nick Benino. Um, both of those guys are UFAs, can go. Nick Benino feels like a perfect depth pickup for a team like the Lightning, who just need a guy to win faceoffs, you know? You need a guy to win faceoffs. You can is play the on Anton the PK. Vol- Anton Vomet trade from yeah. uh, 2015. Yep, you can. Win some faceoffs. He can play on the PK. Um, you know, he can add some scoring, some depth scoring here and there. Good guy in the locker room. All that, you know, all that fun stuff. So, um, guys like that, you know, need. But the, I mean, the big piece though is Timo Meyer, um, nice. who is a RFA. Um, so the Sharks, he do has does have one more year where you can give him a qualifying offer, but it's a ten million dollar uh, uh, deal. So that's the qualifying offer. I assume if a team wants to trade for him, they're going to work out a long-term contract right away. Um, but Timo Meyer is uh, really good at hockey. Um, he's on pace for 45 to 50 goals right now. Um, he is a top line cent- or top line winger basically on anybody's team. Um, he shoots a lot. Um, he's accurate. He's big. He doesn't get hurt. He's going to help your power play. And it's basically going to come down to if Timo, wants- Timo Meyer wants to be a shark, then Mike Greer will work to make him a shark. If Timo Meyer doesn't want to be a Shark anymore, um, then the Sharks are going to have to trade him. And it's probably going to be something like the Alex Debrinkit package of a first-round pick and a very high-end prospect, um, I think, is going to be the starting. And there's been teams you can look at basically the Rangers, um, the Devils, the Islander, kind of like all those those teams there as potential guys who can, you know, looking for a guy like Timo Meyer to just kind of step in and help them kind of make that push here. Yeah, that feels like it's not, that's not going to be a deadline day trade. I feel like that is a, we are going to, we are trading and signing this guy. You know, it's, it's a Matthew Kachuk type trade of it's going to be just massive, which might be good. Um, And, you know, because you'll get a a lot of good pieces, but on the flip side, you won't have Timo Meyer anymore. So, you know, it's really a, a, a win lose scenario. I guess. Um, so, like, my, I guess my my final question to you on the the Timo Meyer thing is, what like do you want to keep Timo Meyer? Would you rather have pieces for the future, or do you think he's still young enough that you can sign him long term and build around him? Uh, I am. I think you can sign Timo Meyer and build around him. He's only twenty six this year. You know, the last two years he's really kind of found his kind of started to enter his prime. So, if you sign him to an eight year deal. Um, starting 27, so year his age 27 to age 34 season. If I kind of you know doing my math correctly, 
and the way he plays the game is I don't think his game is going to just kind of all of a sudden fall off, you know, um, he's fast, but he's not like the fastest guy that he doesn't kind of, you know, he, he plays using his size, right? Like he kind of just bullies people, he'll run, you know, power to the net. Um, and then he, he does a great job of kind of creating his own space. And I just, I don't think his game is going to age poorly. Do I expect 45, 50 goals a year? No, but I mean, I think you can kind of safely pencil in 30 plus goals for the next four to five years. And then if you're bringing on your guys like Eklund and Bordalo along in a top five pick in this draft class, et cetera, et cetera, you can start to see where, where maybe the Sharks can kind of start to get back on track here, especially in the forward department. So, um, you know, and I've been doing research on why I think my, my the Sharks are going to lose a Timo Meyer trade and just, I'll, I'll spoil a little bit. Maybe I've, who knows what time if I actually got this out. I went through the past 12 or 10 years back to 2012 and looked at every uh, draft, every player that was traded for a first round pick that wasn't a draft day trade. So like you didn't know what pick you were getting. The average pick comes out to 22.84. So you're basically trading Timo Meyer for the 23rd pick in the draft. <laughs> It's it's, Here's it's some a, of the last a big risk. Here's the last five uh last couple 2022 Blues pick Jimmy Snuggerud. 2021 Dallas pick Wyatt Johnson 2020 the Flyers pick Tyson Forrester 2019 the Oilers pick Simon Holmstrom 2018 the Ducks pick Isaac Lundstrom 2017 Arizona picked Pierre Oliver Joseph 2016 uh the Panthers picked uh Henrik Borgstrom <laughs> None Would of those, you none trade of those guys, no. I, I feel like it, it's it's kind of too early to tell on you know the the. the, the I mean, some of those guys, yes, you know, like why Johnson, I think is gonna be good and stuff like that, yeah. but like it's a big risk. That's yes, you're you're trading a pretty much a sure thing in Timo Meyer, who's going to be a top line forward for you for the next four or five years, um, for some picks and prospects who statistically aren't going to be as good as Timo Meyer. So well, I feel like all of this, <laughs> all of this is, is really setting us up to, um, for Timo Maia to do the thing that Timo Maia does, which is uh, drink his tiny coffee and then score a bunch of goals against the Blue Jackets. Um, I am still, I, I, I consider myself a part-time LA Kings fan, um, I guess. And I am still vaguely traumatized by the Timo Maia five goal performance. Um, and I don't want that to happen again, but <laughs> Looking at looking at Timo Maya and looking at the Blue Jackets, like it genuinely wouldn't wouldn't shock me. So uh, I guess let's talk about the game. Um, keys to the game. What what do the Sharks have to do uh, to beat the Blue Jackets? Apart from like literally just play any competent hockey. Ever. <laughs> I think if Eric Carlson and kind of Timo Meyer continue to play the way we we've, we've seen them play this year, right? Um, Eric Carlson coming off a four point performance against the Stars. You know, and if he starts cooking, especially on the power play, which I think the Sharks have a huge special teams advantage uh, against the Blue Jackets in this game. I, um, I know the Sharks power play, the numbers don't look as good. You know, I think they're like 20th right now in the NHL. But I, I think they're kind of, especially that first line, that first unit power play, um, they're they're kind of weird. The first unit power play is great. The second unit power play looks more it's like a PK so, unit. It's some guys. <laughs> It's just five guys you can kind of give the other guys a break type of thing. So they're very much a star scrubs approach with the, the power. Do you play. know? Do you know what I would do for a power play to be twentieth in the league right now? Oh, I'm sure right now. You know, yes. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think the sharks the sharks special teams are, are going to be a huge advantage in this game. Um, so I think if Capo Kakinen can play competently, um. And then if Timo Meyer and Eric Carlson can continue to do Timo Meyer and Eric Carlson things, if, you know, Eric Carlson uh, creating the transition game, finding open guys in the offensive zone, um, just kind of dangling the jock strap off of other dudes um, and then finding Timo Meyer wide open. We've seen that a lot. And I, that's kind of been the recipe for success for the Sharks this, this season. And then if anybody in the like bottom six scores, if like Stephen Lorenz scores, Noah Gregor can hit the net. Um, Nick Benito. If any of these guys scores, the Sharks usually kind of find their way to win the game. Now for the Blue Jackets, uh, what 
what's the kind of the, the road to success for the Blue Jackets in this game? Um, I mean, I will I will start small. Um, my goals for this game is that no one gets hurt, no one gets injured. <laughs> um, I would like at least one tape to tape pass in the neutral zone. Um, just, just one. That's, that, that is all I'm asking. Just warm ups included. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, honestly, it's, it's kind of, again, it comes back to a combination of things. I think the goaltending needs to be as good, if not better than it's been the last couple of games. Um, Neil Tarasov will maybe be starting, um, depending on the, the goalies is, are going through a bit of a weird thing in the minute. Jonas Corposalo has just been away for personal reasons, um, so they're kind of, he's back with the team now, I believe. I don't know whether he's going to be playing on, on Saturday. Um, so it's kind of up in the air about who the goalie is even going to be. But the goalie needs to be good. Um, because I know that we've just talked about how, you know, the Sharks are just these, it's basically two guys and a bunch of other dudes. But those two guys can really make someone's life, someone's life difficult um, mm. if they decide to turn it on. And we've seen that both of these guys sometimes just decide to have a game <laughs> to be um, the best guy. Yeah. I'm going to just be the best player on the ice tonight. So yeah. Yeah. They get to, sometimes Eric Carlson just decides that and like, that's fine, but it doesn't bode super well for the, um, the goaltending that the blue jackets have been getting for most of the season. Goaltending, like I said earlier, it's kind of on an upswing at the minute. Um, they're looking a lot better. Ducks game, notwithstanding the goaltending can be good. I think they stand much more of a chance. Um, they've started, showing flashes of offense from guys that are not named Johnny Gaudreau, which is nice. Um, mm -hmm. Jack Rostovic snapped an 18-game uh, scoreless streak. Uh, Mathieu Olivier scored a goal, which I think surprised him more than basically anyone else <laughs> on, on the ice. Um, goal from Nick Blankenberg in the Ducks game as well. He just came back from a broken uh, ankle, which was really great to see. He's another guy that's missed a bunch of time. Um, and he was a guy that... Um, he he came into this league kind of as a no one. He signed out of as a college free agent um, from from Michigan, and then immediately was just like, "Well, I'm only five nine, but I'm going to work harder than anyone else on the <laughs> ice." And um, it's it's funny if you look at his like stats on um, hockey vis. I don't know what they look like at the minute, but earlier in the season, he basically his stats on his own is he's basically a replacement level player, but everyone else plays better when he's on the ice. So I don't know if it's that he's just really good at motivating people or if they just don't want to be shown up by someone who's, you know, comes up to hear on them. But yes. he is he is he makes players around him better. Um, so he's he was a big loss. So having him back has been really great. Um, he scored against the Ducks. So, you know, getting depth scoring from guys like that, like you said, literally anyone that's not Johnny Gaudreau or Patrick Lyon <laughs> scoring a goal is always a win. Um, and yeah, just like. Play the entire game, I think, which sounds dumb, but the Blue Jackets love to play 40 minutes of a hockey game and then be like, oh, should we go home now? No, no, you can't go home now. There's 20 minutes to play, you know, or they'll have just a completely God awful first period. And then that's the yeah. Sharks, too. Yep. That and was then the Sharks in the first... second period to be like, oh, should we play some hockey? Yes. Yeah. And that... <laughs> I think it'll, the other thing that's going to be really interesting is see like the five on five play. Mm -hmm. um, the Sharks are actually, it's interesting. The Sharks are actually uh, actual just raw goals. Um, they are fifth in the NHL in goals scored at five on five with 103. Um, the Blue Jackets are like six from the worst at 78. Uh, no, uh, the Blackhawks are, are worse. But. Oh, okay. But both these teams uh, hemorrhage goals at 5 on 5. Both are tied at 121. Uh, the Sharks have played an extra game. Both have given up 121 uh, 5 on 5 goals. So this feels like maybe a game where the, the Blue Jackets offense can maybe find some rhythm here, especially against, a, like I said, a Sharks defense that likes to, you know, they'll play solid defensively, but then they just like have just utter brain farts and you know let guys just kind of be wide open so i think if this could be a game where i know maybe the the, the might be a sneaky a lot of goals in this game for some reason this yeah this feels like um this feels well a it feels like a trap first of all <laughs> for this both teams like trap game. i don't know who for <laughs> but it definitely feels like a trap um yeah. this feels like one of those nightmare seven six games i hate them i hate them no so they're much. the best but that feels like what's going to happen. Um, so I guess yay for people who like lots of scoring. Um, and just, I don't know that the Blue Jackets will win. 
if they get into a that kind of high scoring affair with with a team like the Sharks, but it could it could get a little it's going to get a lot messy. The Blue Jackets do not know how to defend, and you can't make them. But it could be that's that's I think that's my my prediction for this game is um because and what I normally do is when we do squad casts like this is we'll predict final score and um the player on your team that opens the scoring for your team. Mm. And so I think my prediction is going to be seven, six, but I don't know who, <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know who's going to win. I just think that there's going to be like 13 goals scored. Um, and in terms of opening the scoring, it feels like, you know what? It might be, a, it might be Gus Nyquist. Like, he they, feels like a guy that hasn't scored in a minute. And, Nyquist um, revenge game. Yeah, I Gus Nyquist. I, I deserve a Gus Nyquist revenge game. He's such a nice guy. Um, and I feel like he deserves nice things. So that's going to be, that's my guess, I think, is I've been wrong, I think, every game except like two, both in <laughs> final score and prediction of who scores. But that's my that's my prediction. And uh, I'm sticking with it. So who's final? Okay, so final score. And who's going to score first for the Sharks? Uh, I'm going to go 5-4 Sharks. I just think they have a little bit more offense of juice right now. Um, especially yeah. they just scored five on or four on Ottinger and then it tapped an empty netter as well. But And then uh, I don't think you can go wrong with Timo Meyer scoring the first goal. <laughs> It's, it's a pretty feels like it's a really safe bet most of the times is just picking picking Timo Meyer picking Eric Carlson um you're probably gonna I've have just been rotating time. Johnny Gaudreau and Patrick Line around yeah. for the past couple of games but I'm like you know you know what the San, the Sharks are here Gus Nyquist was a shark for a minute let's yeah the Gus Nyquist revenge game I like yeah. it uh yeah like I said I, th- I think the Sharks win this game but this is kind of the end the start of the end for their season because then they play like some the Bruins teams. and the Cap, they play like these ridiculous teams for the next eight games all on the road. With I know there's the uh, the All Star break sandwich in there as well, but it is a brutal death march here getting started for the Sharks. So I think this is gonna be their last win for a while. Yeah, this this again that feels similar to the Blue Jackets. Um, I don't know what the I think that the next game after this is the Flames, who have been struggling, and it's the return of Johnny Cadreau to Calgary. So I'm sure that's gonna be fun and not at all filled with mess but okay yeah, oh, again, so here's like... here's the shark schedule uh before they so blue jackets brew these are all away blue jackets bruins red wings hurricanes penguins lightning panthers capitals um and then they finally get the penguins at home on valentine's day that's their next home <laughs> <game>. <laughs> I, they could win the red wings game there's a red wings game in there um you know are we sure i mean i'm not sure but I have slightly more faith in in the Sharks than I do in the Blue Jackets, so we'll uh, we'll see. I think it'll be a fun game. I don't it'll know whether it'll be a good game. Yes, and I think it'll be a good Saturday distinction night. to to make there. But um, if people want to kind of learn more about the kind of season that Eric Carson is having, or they just want to, I don't know, enjoy a hockey team that is fun, where can people find uh, you and Locked On Sharks? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at my fry hole, uh, where the Eric Carlson propaganda machine is running strong. Um, you can listen, of course, wherever you get podcasts uh, for free. And then, of course, you can subscribe on YouTube as well at Locked on Sharks for all that stuff. Yeah. Jay, where can people find you? Um, I mean, I can't in good conscience recommend that people pay attention to the Blue Jackets um, (laughs) because usually when they get perceived by other people is when bad things happen. But um, you can find Locked on Blue Jackets wherever you get podcasts, wherever you get Locked on Sharks. Uh, We're over on YouTube. So if you want to hit subscribe over there, that really helps me out. It helps you out. Uh, You can find me at underscore Jacob Foster if you want some dog pictures or Star Wars opinions or just getting really, really angry about the state of diversity and inclusion in hockey. Uh, you can find that over at uh, underscore Jacob Foster, J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-R. And uh, yeah, I think that's that's about it. Go Blue Jackets. Bye, friends. Yes. <laughs> Bye, friends. <laughs> and that's about all I've got for today. Uh, tomorrow, there is no episode because it's Sunday. Uh, Monday, we will break down tonight's game against the... San Jose Sharks. We'll do a mailbag. So if you've got questions, please feel free to leave them in the YouTube comments. Uh, you can at me on Twitter with uh, at underscore Jacob Foster, J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-R. You can at the podcast, L-O underscore Blue Jacket. You can email at 
lockdownbluejackets at gmail.com. Uh, any of those places are good to leave questions. I'll also do a tweet with a graphic. So if you want to do that, just reply to that tweet, uh, things like that. So that's going to be Monday's episode. Thank you for listening. Thank you for making this your first listen of the day. Every day, Locked on Blue Jackets continues to be free and available. Uh, you're never going to have to get behind a paywall for a locked on product. That is our promise to you. And uh, enjoy the game. Enjoy your weekend. And uh, until Monday, make sure you stay locked on.